Hello, welcome to my studio, Make Pop Music. I've gotten a lot of requests and it's the end of 2018. I think I'm finally ready to let you into the studio. It's been a long year of just getting set up in a couple of different locations, but now that it's all ready, let's go ahead and let's do the studio tour. I've been on the killing spree. I ain't got the time for all my enemies. I'm out here taking shots without the penalties. You should think before you cross me accidentally. I'm willing to cause I've been on the killing spree. So we're in my studio, so as you can see, we're in a room in an apartment building, just a residential apartment. I work from home just to save some time on the commute, save some money for overhead, stuff like that. All of my clients are online, so I don't really need to always be at a commercial studio. So we're just in a bedroom right now. It's 11 feet by 11 feet, nine foot ceilings. And as you can see, it's got carpet on the ground and I've got a rug over that. Uh, the rug is from Ikea for anybody that's going to ask. And then all of the gray panels that you see kind of lined up along these walls, those are the Prime Acoustic London kit. And I believe it's the London 10 kit or the London 12 kit. I can't remember exactly, but got those from Sweetwater, so it's nice. Comes with a couple bass traps, a couple broadband diffusers, and then a couple, or broadband absorbers, and then a couple of the little diffusion squares. So those are really, really nice. I've got them all around the room. And then if you see these orange panels, my lovely wife actually helped me make these. These are made out of just like a rigid fiberglass, like a rock soul safe and sound kind of thing. Uh, and then we've just built these these boards to case it and then just wrapped it in a really, really breathable fabric. And that's it for those. So if you can just kind of pan around, you can kind of see we've treated it pretty well. We don't have anything hanging from the ceiling. Uh, I don't really need that much deadening in here. Let's go ahead and let's kind of hop into my actual computer because that's going to be the second thing that people probably want to see the most. So I am running a Dell and it's actually from Newegg so it's got a couple aftermarket upgrades. We're running an i7 processor i7-7700 and then we've got 32 gigs of RAM in it. We've got a one terabyte SSD that's going to be internal for all of my programs and stuff like that so Cubase runs off the one terabyte SSD internal. Then we've got a one terabyte SSD external that's got all my actual sessions on it. And then we've got a four terabyte hard disk drive that's external. That's got all of my samples, all of my files, all of my exports, stuff like that on it. Then it all gets backed up to a six terabyte uh, backup drive and then all backed up to the cloud, of course. So you can see I'm running a dual monitor setup. I've just got a cheap Asus one here and a Sharp TV that was actually the TV that my wife and I had in our bedroom before we got a new one on Black Friday. So they're not matching, uh, but I like this one just to have the mix console up just so I can see it. A lot of the time I'll have the UAD console on this one as well. Uh, the desk we've got here is actually just a kitchen table from Ikea. Last night I spent a couple hours actually doing all of the cable management and it proved to be a little bit tricky because as you can see, since it's just a table, there's not really any hideaways for cable management. So it took a little while. We wrapped it around the legs, uh, you know, just made sure everything was as tidy as possible. It's not perfect, but it'll definitely get the job done. I'll flash up a picture of the before just so you can see what an atrocious nightmare it was. So another piece of gear that I feel like most people underutilize in their studio is the actual studio chair. This is one of the more expensive purchases I had within the past year for the studio. It's a Herman Miller Aeron. And to me, it's worth it. I sit in it probably 10, 11 hours every single day. It's super comfortable. It's weird because it's not like the most comfortable chair you'll ever sit in, but after long hours, it starts to become the most comfortable chair you've ever sat in. So I don't really have that many back issues anymore. Totally worth the money. You can get them used a lot of the time. New, they're about 1100 bucks. You can get them used for like four or 500 though, if you look around and find a really, really good deal. And then over here, you'll see the interface that I'm running. So I run an Apollo Twin. It's just a USB connection because it's really, really hard to get a Windows computer that is Thunderbolt or what was Firewire before they all switched to Thunderbolt. So we've got an Apollo Twin. Um, it's normally everything I need. If I need more inputs, I can switch to this Presonus audio box, which is old. I'm thinking what I might do is I might sell this audio box and switch it out for something like an Octopre just so I can have that going into my Apollo Twin with ADAT. So if I need to add those, I can add those in addition to my Apollo versus switching off my drivers and everything like that. Also in the rack, you can see we've got two power conditioners. Uh, they all, they both have a place to plug something in for the front. Really nice for phone cables for myself or if I ever have a client or somebody sitting in. And then we've actually got a drawer right here that is lockable with a key. It's kind of a mess right now. It's got some stress balls, some DVDs, some cables, stuff like that. And then on the bottom, we've got a couple of my external hard drives that I just kind of take with me. One of those has a hard drive from my old computer, just in case I ever need to plug it in and something didn't actually transfer over 
So for monitors, my main monitoring system, I used to have two sets of monitors, but after a while of having these Focal Shape 65s, I got rid of the others. I was using Personas Aris 5s, I believe. And once I started using these, I thought I was gonna save both of them and just kind of switch off, but I've quickly noticed that one pair was good enough for me. So just to save space and just to save inputs and outputs and cables, I got rid of the Personas ones and now I only use the Focus, right? Or I'm sorry, the Focals. And as you can see on top of this speaker, I've got Clark Griswold for my favorite movie, maybe my second favorite movie of all time, which is Christmas Vacation. My wife got it for me as an early Christmas present. And then if you can see on my bookshelf, uh, I have a lot of toys. I'll need a little bit more, but we've got a Woody here. That's from my favorite movie. I like keeping the studio kind of light and fun. I don't want it to look too dead in here. I don't want it to look too sterile, but I also don't want it to be cluttered. So we've got, you know, a uh, picture of my late grandfather and me and my cousin. We've got some toys. Uh, this shelf right here is normally where all of my camera stuff goes. And then on the bottom, we've got my camera lights. We've got my wife's Christmas gift that I still need to get ready. And then we've got a box that's just full with, be careful if you're pulling that out, it's just cables and extra junk. And then we've got my old computer just in case I ever need to fire it up to actually get into it to see if I need anything. So for my main MIDI keyboard, I'm running an M Audio Code 61. I like that it's 61 keys, it's enough for me to play full keyboard patterns, but it's got like kind of semi-weighted synth action keys. So I don't really like playing synths and stuff like that with weighted keys. So I actually prefer it to have like the more plasticky synth action keys. I use this mostly for like, I'll use this for drums and then bass, main pads, stuff like that. Um, so this is really nice. I have a MIDI map that goes to all of my programs that I frequently, frequently use where all of these midis are just kind of learned into whatever I'm doing so I can do CC automation on the fly. Super, super simple. And then for my bigger keyboard, if I'm wanting to do something, you know, more along the lines of piano or with weighted keys, or I'm wanting sounds out of an actual keyboard, I'm coming over to the Roland Juno DS. So it's a really, really nice keyboard. It's more of like a Rompler style. It's not like the traditional Junos that are synthesizers, but it's got tons and tons and tons of sounds on it. They're all super usable. I'll either run MIDI through this and then reamp them back to like loop through here after they've been quantized and tuned up or whatever. Or sometimes I'll just line them out. I've got two stereo, I've got a stereo cable set coming into my interface if I actually just wanna play it from the keyboard directly out. So let's talk about microphones. So I've got two main microphones that I use and then a stereo set of small diaphragm condensers. The main mic I'm going for 99% of the time just because it's the easiest and it's right here and you don't really have to do much to it is the Sure SM7B, and then I've got the Audio-Technica ATH N50s. They're trashed, I need a new pair soon. I've had these since I literally got into production, so it's almost their time to go. That's my main mic. My first mic I actually ever really bought was this Sterling ST59. I've got a pair of just Philips closed ear headphones right here just for if I have somebody else tracking. I normally don't, but just in case. I've got this little vocal cage here. It's a pretty dead room, but just in case the room is giving me any issues, which it normally doesn't, I've got that just to help, especially with a condenser. And then the last little couple mics that I have are these two small diaphragm condensers. They're the AKG P170s. So my wife got me a set of these one year and I like them just for acoustic guitar or I'll run both of them as a stereo pair and, and record a lot of the percussion samples that we sell for make pop doing stuff like that. So that's all my microphones, SM7B, ST59, two P170s. That's normally enough for me. I don't do a lot of recording here, so I don't need a ton of stuff like that. And then for guitars, this is actually where I started with music. So my first guitar ever was this BC Rich Mockingbird right here. And I don't ever really play it anymore. I just keep it for sentimental value. Then I got this Gibson right here, the Les Paul. And I still use this one a ton. I'm going to it all the time. It's literally getting used almost every single day. This is my go-to acoustic. It's just a Dean little mini size acoustic. I like that it's small, it's portable. If I want to travel with it, I can travel. I've just got this Squire bass here just to lay down some bass patterns. I normally do MIDI bass since I'm doing a lot of pop and hip hop production and stuff like that, but I like it just in case I need an electric bass, I'll throw it in. And then this uh, guitar right here needs dusting and restringing. Uh, I can't play it anymore because a piece inside is broken and if I, just, I tighten the strings too much, it's gonna snap into pieces. This is actually my grandfather's that he left me when he passed away. So I need to get some kind of just like glass acrylic case to hang it up. Cause right now it's just not being utilized very well. I could at least use it for decoration. 
So that's most of my main gear. Then I've just got trinkets here and there. I've got a little drawing tablet for any logos I do. I've got, you know, a plant. I've got a spray bottle. It's not for the plant, it's a fake plant. It's actually for when my cats are pissing me off. So I have to keep them out of the cables. Um, and then other than that, just like a movie I worked on in high school. Um, just stuff to make it fun. I have a little lamp. I like to light a candle when I'm working. I like to keep it light in here. I don't want it to just feel like a museum, but I also don't want it to be like some of the studios I see where you can't even move around comfortably. So that's why I've got it pretty open. Everything I need is normally within a quick arm's reach. The one gripe I have about my new room is the carpet coming up. So if anybody has any kind of recommendations for keeping a rug coming up while it's on carpet, uh, let me know because that is super, super irritating. But other than that, that's basically my whole studio setup. I'd love to do another video kind of running through my DAW, showing you my maybe like top 10 most used plugins. Uh, so if you wanna see that, let me know. We can actually do more of like a computer tour. But that's gonna be it for right now, and I will see you guys next time.